Good morning, my friends. It's my joy to welcome each and every one of you to this place this morning to worship God together. I'm glad to welcome those who are joining us on live stream this morning. We have lots of folks who worship with us remotely, either because they can't be here physically or they live in other places, and we're always glad to worship together in spirit with all of you. I would invite everyone who's here this morning to sign in on the registration pads, and uh, they are hopefully making their way down the row. And if you would sign in to let us know you were here and also take a moment to look at the names of other folks sitting on your row. And if there's a name you don't recognize, then there's an opportunity to make a new friend in Christ this morning. If you are visiting with us and perhaps looking for a place to call your church home, we invite you to come and join us at the welcome desk, which is just outside this door, uh, where we'll have someone there to greet you and to answer any questions you might have. We have many things going on in the life of the church in the next week and a half, and a lot of those things are listed in the insert in your bulletin, but I want to highlight just a few of them. Right after this service at 1 o'clock up in the 4th Story Theater, we're having auditions for our play, The Bible in 30 Minutes or Less, and it's a play that has lots of parts for people of all ages, even if you've never done drama before, we encourage you to give it a try and come upstairs for the auditions. This evening at 5.30, we have our wonderful annual tradition of worship and candle lighting. It begins officially at 5.30, but the bells will begin ringing at 10 after 5, and the pews will start filling up before that. So we encourage you to, uh, to get here early and make sure and make lots of room on your row to carpool if you can, and also if you can to park in our uh, neighbor Caterpillar parking lot. Um, They are opening that up for us and hope that many of you will make that choice. On Wednesday, we have a couple of great things going on in the church at six o'clock. Everybody's invited, but especially our children are invited to go upstairs in the fourth story theater for a showing of the Polar Express at six o'clock. At 6.30 in the sanctuary, we'll be having a service of the longest night, which is a, a contemplative, quiet service of prayer and worship, especially geared to those of us who might be having a harder time with the holidays and, and looking uh, for comfort and a word of hope in the midst of these days. So that will be at 6.30 on Wednesday. And finally, just a reminder, Christmas Eve, we have a four o'clock service, um, which is especially accessible to our children, but is for all everybody. And then at 1030, when hopefully all of you children will be asleep, um, we have another service uh, that finishes up right about midnight as we move into Christmas Day. So we would invite you to plan on coming to one of those services. But this morning, we are still on the journey of Advent, still awaiting the birth of Christ, and we get to hear the story of Mary this morning. So I look forward to hearing that story with you in this time of worship.
Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. The Lord has brought down the powerful and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry, and the rich have been sent away empty. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is God's name. Light this third candle of our Advent wreath as a sign of the justice of Christ coming into our world. Please de hear these words from the Psalms. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills of righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations, may he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound. Let us come now before God our Savior with our confessions, trusting in God's great love for us, trusting in God's great love for all, and trusting that neither one detracts from the other. Mighty God, Mary's revolutionary song proclaims that you are on the side of the lowly and the hungry. Yet we confess that this can make us feel uncomfortable when we have more in common with the powerful and the rich. O oh God, the truth is that you are always on our side, whether we find ourselves in need or find ourselves in plenty. When we are in plenty, satisfy us with your love and your peace so that we may hold what we have more loosely and seek to right the inequalities that surround us. And when we are in need, O oh God, fill us with the assurance that we are never forgotten by you, and that as your kingdom comes, it is the lowly who will be lifted, the oppressed who will receive justice, and the least who will be among those among us. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us exchange signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you.
One of the great joys of the church is the baptism of children. This morning, Chase and Sarah Jane Moore bring their son, William Park Moore, to God before the community of faith for baptism. My family in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Sarah Jane and Chase, I ask you now on behalf of the whole church these ancient questions of the faith. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people? And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And my friends in the congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in service with others. We will pray for him to be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by the Holy Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water in this child who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. And what name have you given your son? William, William Park. William Park. Baptize you in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and sustains us. Oh boy, let's see if this will help. To go up this way. Oh, that's better. I'm going to invite your mommy and daddy and Pastor Brandon to lay a hand on you. We're going to pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. William, may the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, Mr. Will, you like the past? Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> you want to go for a walk? Let's go for a walk. <laughs> we all need our comforts, don't we? Wonderful. Well, Will, I'm going to bring you a little bit closer to your church family so they can see you up close because they're about to make a promise to you that they're going to do everything they can to live out the gospel 
so you can see what love looks like. And they're going to love you completely and find all sorts of ways to show you that. Some of them will teach you Sunday school and vacation Bible school. Some of them might look after you in the nursery or even be your confirmation mentor. So let's listen together as they make their promise to you and to God. Will the congregation please stand and face William Park. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sibling in Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend William Park to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, William Park, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our commitment to participate faithfully in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. should make a special announcement that in honor of Pastor Carol, we'll be raising money for pacifiers after the <laughs> church service. Uh, never hurts to have a little laugh. So. Let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. If you would like to follow along, please turn to page 831 of your pew Bible. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
things I love about our sanctuary is that there are ways with our eyes that we can see the story. So, for example, this morning we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And can you see where on my stole there might be Mary and Jesus? Can you see? Sometimes it's easier to see from far away. There she is. There's Mary. And there's the baby. You see that? Yeah, so you can see some of the story with your eyes. And then during those Sundays of Advent, we have our Advent wreath. And some of you guys helped to light it this morning. Thank you so much. So some of the candles are blue, and one of the candles is a different color. What color is that? Pink. Pink. And every year in Advent, on the third Sunday of Advent, we light a pink candle because pink is for joy. And today we talk about Mary and her joy that she got to be the mother of Jesus. What's even especially cool is that the people who gave the flowers for today gave pink flowers. I think they knew that today's color was pink. So as we think about how did they know that? Maybe they've been going to church for a long time. I don't know. I don't know. That's a science question, I think. But as we think about joy today, I think you all understand what joy is. Are you excited about Christmas? Yes, yes very much. Me too. Excited about Jesus' birth. And so, because y'all are so good at being joyful, I want you to make sure and spread the joy with all of these folks out here. Because sometimes as grown-ups, we get a little stressed out this time of year, and we need your joy. Help us remember that this is all about the joy of Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the many ways we get to hear the story of Christmas through your scriptures, through what we see in the sanctuary, through the candles we light. They all remind us of the joy that Mary had. Help us to be joyful too. And thank you for these children who help us and remind us that it's all about joy. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much. You even wore pink today. How perfect is that? Well, I'm sure many of you have heard the news that Time Magazine has announced their Person of the Year for 2019. And the person of the year is Greta Thunberg. Now, if you don't know who Greta Thunberg is, she is a 16-year-old from Sweden who is so passionate about climate change and doing something about it. I first heard about Greta Thunberg in August, I think it was, as she was making her voyage across the Atlantic on a boat that was only solar powered. And she was making that journey so that she could come and speak to the United Nations and speak on behalf of her generation to call all of us into action, to do something, to take care of our planet and to remind us that we're in a moment approaching a crisis. I find Greta Thunberg incredibly inspiring and I'm especially amazed that at the age of 16, she has the conviction and the courage to cross the Atlantic in a boat and to come and speak in front of the United Nations. How did a 16-year-old get to be that courageous and that passionate about what she believes? It's funny, but I find myself asking similar questions in a much more profound way about Mary. How did Mary at her young age, come to believe so fully in what God was doing? How did she come to that place of courage where she could live out her part in God's great plan of salvation for creation? Now, we don't know a lot about Mary, and most of what we know comes from the Gospel of Luke, these first two chapters. We know that she was betrothed to a man named Joseph, 
which means if she, things were going according to the culture, she was probably 13 years old, maybe 14, very young. Growing up in the little town of Nazareth, which was a backwater town, even in Judea, in this remote corner of the Roman Empire, she was most likely uneducated, illiterate, and very poor. And yet, God chose her to be the Christ bearer, to be the one who would carry the Christ child into the world. And she was so empowered by this choice of God's that she ran to see her relative Elizabeth. And as the two of them spent time together, her mouth opened and she began to sing this song that Frank read for us. This song called the Magnificat. This song of justice and joy. Yes, this 13-year-old illiterate girl sings about God's justice that is being accomplished in that moment. Surely you heard it, God is lifting up the lowly. God has done great things for her, a lowly servant girl. God is bringing down the mighty from their thrones, is scattering the thoughts of the proud and the arrogant, is sending the rich away empty and filling the hungry with good things. She is announcing in this song, in this prophecy, the great reversal that God is up to. She is revealing to all of us the very heart of God for the poor and the lowly and the suffering. It is a song of justice. And I don't know about you, but it it makes me a little bit uncomfortable But I think she is reminding all of us that Christ is coming into the world to liberate us all. To liberate the rich and the poor, the high and the low. To remove all of those things that keep us from knowing the saving grace of God. From receiving the love of God. It may sound like bad news for the rich and the mighty and the proud. But ultimately, Mary knows that it is good news for all people. It is a song of justice. But it is also a song of joy. The song begins with Mary saying, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Blessed? Really? This 13-year-old girl thinks that she's blessed? She's going to have to go back to Nazareth, back to her hometown, where all of her neighbors will see that she is with child and not married. Her life is at risk. She could very well be stoned to death and seen as a sinner. Joseph, her betrothed, could reject her, and we'll hear more about his story next week. But by all evidence outside of her, she is not blessed. She is a poor peasant living under the thumb of the Roman Empire, about to go back to her hometown and be exposed and shamed. And yet here she is, singing this great song of justice and joy. Where did she get that kind of courage? Mary's song is an inspiration to all of us. Her story reminds us that each and every one of us, without exception, is a Christ bearer. Each one of us is called to bear the Christ into the world. And we all have different callings and different ways of doing that. From all we know about Mary, she was not a preacher. She was not a teacher. She was not a miracle worker. Her job was to bring Christ into the world, to nurture him as a baby, to teach him as a child, and to send him out into the world 
and then to follow him as one of his disciples. And she did. And each one of us is called to live out God's justice in the world, to bear Christ into the world in different ways, to take part in the great work of justice that God is doing. And here's the thing that I think Mary can especially teach us today. We are called to do that with joy. It is so easy in our world to get discouraged, to look at ourselves and think, I am not good enough. There's nothing I can do to help God achieve God's kingdom on earth. Surely God can't use me. Or we look around us at the world and think that everything is falling apart, that there is more conflict and more hatred and more anger in the world than we've seen in a lifetime, and we begin to despair and lose hope or give in to cynicism or take our sides and demonize the other. And yet we look at Mary, this poor 13-year-old peasant who in spite of everything around her was filled with joy that she got to play a part in building God's justice, in announcing God's liberation, in bringing the Christ into the world. So my friends, on this day, may we be co-creators of God's justice in the world. May we join with God in spreading the good news of love and grace for all people. May we shout out the invitation to the world saying, Christ is coming and you're invited. And may we sing that song of justice with joy and with hope and with the conviction of Mary that it has already been accomplished. Amen. As a people of joy, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join our voices together in our affirmation of faith found on number 883 in your United Methodist hymnal. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As we come to a time of prayer, we lift up our joys and concerns as an offering to our loving God. If you have prayer requests that you would like to share this morning, you may write those on one of the gray cards that is located in the pew racks in front of you. And you can indicate on those cards whether your request should be shared or should remain confidential. And then you may place those cards in the offering plates in a few moments as they make their way down the pews. This morning we celebrate two births as signified by the beautiful roses on the communion table. First we celebrate the birth of George Milan Long, who was born December 5th to Emily and Joel Long. And then we also celebrate the birth of Evelyn Claire Dale, who was born December 6th to Caroline and Aaron Dale. Evie Claire is also welcomed by her big brother, Hawkins Dale. 
Our prayers and blessings and sympathy go to Mark and Ruth and Roland this morning and their family who are mourning the death of Mark's father, Ben Roland, who died Friday, December 13th. Services will be held on December 20th in Princeton, Kentucky. Visitation will begin at noon and go until 2 o'clock, and then there will be a service at 2 o'clock, and Tom Laney will provide the homily. Those are all of our prayer concerns that will be spoken today. And before I invite us to a time of prayer, I just want to mention that in our prayer today, that I will begin with some words from a song, from a hymn, Till All the Jails Are Empty, a modern song of justice by Carl P. Daw, Jr. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Till all the jails are empty and all the bellies filled, Till no one hurts or steals or lies, and no more blood is spilled. Till age and race and gender no longer separate. Till pulpit, press, and politics are free of greed and hate. God has work for us to do. In tenement and mansion, in factory, farm, and mill, in boardroom and in billiard hall, in wards where time stands still, in classroom, church, and office, in shops or on the street, in every place where people thrive or starve or hide or meet, God has work for us to do. Through tending to creation, to water, land, and air, through what we do and what we don't to nourish and repair, through seeking the protection of creatures great and small, through binding up the web of life that animates us all, God has work for us to do. By sitting at a bedside to hold pale, trembling hands, by speaking for the powerless against unjust demands, by praying through our doing and singing though we fear, by trusting that the seed we sow will bring God's harvest near, God has work for us to do. Gracious God, as we hear the powerful songs of justice and joy that resonate through the ages, as we wonder at the words from the mouth of Mary and the words of countless others, who have sung songs of hope for a better day. We admit that justice and righteousness sometimes confuse us. We are not always sure what is right and just, and we don't always know how to go about doing it. And yet, we know you have work for us to do. We pray that you would give us hearts and minds attuned to your work. And remind us through Mary's words and example that you are the one already at work making all things right. And you are simply inviting us to come alongside. Awaken us to your powerful work and presence of mercy and goodness in your creation and in the lives of all who need it this day as we enter a time of silent prayer. As a people certain that God is already at work for what is right and good and is inviting our response, we boldly pray the words that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may we give our tithes and offerings to God's work of justice making through this body of Christ.
followers of Christ, proclaiming to all with our actions and even our words the great love and justice and grace of God that is born into the world. And in doing so, may we know that same love and grace and justice and joy.